Hello everybody and welcome to another painting video with myself John and in this one we're going to be tackling a little bit of Wild West Exodus in the form of Long Tree here who is very much a plague doctor, he's got the cool beaky mask and everything on um, and what I decided to do with this, I looked at a few painted examples and I thought we're going to make this guy look more traditional uh, plague doctor, so dark uh, coloured coat dark coloured basically everything but with a few brighter uh, areas like the mask we're going to do in a sort of a light grey white um, sinister looking eye, uh, red eye lenses uh, a lot of leather work bit of brass gold and metals here and there and I think you're going to be happy with the end result and before we get stuck in I want to mention that we're going to be using a lot of inks in this one uh, particularly Green Stuff World's intensity inks and ink washes or wash inks as they call them uh, starting to get to grips with those a bit more and finding how much versatility they have particularly if you're going to be playing with an airbrush doing your priming and a bit of pre-shading or anything uh, these are very helpful tools uh, if you want a quick finish on something so a bit of um, intensity ink washed down with a bit of the ink wash or the wash ink uh, they've turned out really well very useful uh, particularly with cloth so uh, all in all that's all I have to say. We're just going to have to get stuck right in. So before we get started into Long Tree, let's just talk about the priming again, uh, like I usually do at the start of these. Uh, obviously he's been airbrushed uh, and zenithed, and the reason for that is I want to, well, A, it always helps if you're doing thin layers of paint and stuff like that, but I also want to play with that a little bit more in this one. I uh, want to use a lot more inks because I've been playing with a bit of inks and I like what they're doing and I like the effect and the finish that I'm getting. So I'm going to be combining uh, some contrast paints with some inks in this uh, video. And the first one I want to do is I really want to work on all the black that he's going to be wearing. Because Plague Doctors, I'm going to paint them a bit more like a traditional Plague Doctor with a bit of um, that sort of Wild West Exodus sort of steampunky feel to it. Because he has a lot of rivets and stuff in there. But underneath it I want him to be quite a traditional looking Plague Doctor. So we're going to be going with the black for his long coat, uh, for a lot of his leather work it's going to be very dark. Um, what I am going to do though is take a bit of liberty and actually paint the mask with a bit of white. Uh, I want it to stand out a bit more under the, the brim of that hat uh, and make him look you know, somewhat sinister in a way, as he's clearly been designed to look fairly sinister. So to start work on the black we're going to be going with a contrast paint first. Uh, Basilicanum Grey will be our first port of call and we're going to apply that fairly liberally over every piece of cloth that we want to go black. So it's primarily his coat and we're just going to apply that and what this is going to do is dull as anything a little bit but also bring our shadows in and that's more or less the main goal of this is to bring the shadows in and start that process of working down towards a black material with uh, some interesting highlight. So we'll just apply this over everything I want to be uh, of a black material. With the Basilicanum Grey now dry you can see the sort of effect that it's giving is just making that cloth look a little darker and a little heavier it's taken away from the brightness of the, the zenith underneath it. So what I want to do now is to tint it a little bit before I move on to the last step which will uh, involve an ink. Well this involves an ink too. Uh, it involves ancient sepia which is a Green Stuff World uh, wash ink and I'm thinning it down a little bit with my brush and all I need it to do is give me the slightest dirty brown tint to it and I need that because when I put the final ink down which will be a black it'll give a little bit of a, a dirty look to it without, well, it'll give it a little bit of a dirty look, you know, it'll look a bit more leathery or a little bit more dirty. So I have this thinned, I'm just going to give the same areas that we did the Basilicanum Grey a little run with this. And then once that's dry, we can put our black ink over it and we'll see what we've got, hopefully. We should have a dirty, worn looking uh, material that's still close enough to looking like it's just completely, you know, it's a black material to start with. So we'll see how this goes. 
and then we'll put the black ink down. So with the sepia ink now dry, we can see the effect that we're getting and it's just given it a little bit of a brown tint to it, which is really fascinating looking. You know, I'd almost be tempted just to leave it at that, but I'm going to move on, as I said before, to a black ink and it's um, not that one because I lifted the wrong bottle. <laughs> it's uh, this one. I, I mean, seriously, I can barely read that. Our, a tran... It's black. It's a black ink. <laughs> uh, again, watered it down a little bit, although I'm going a little heavier than I did with the sepia. And uh, yeah, let's just add it and see what we get. So what this should do, in theory, is bring the shadows back closer to a black, while also tinting everything else down a little bit. And will allow the, the sepia ink to retain a bit of a, a brownish tone Add to the cloth while making everything else essentially uh, a, a black or a, a, sh a shade of grey at this point. That's the theory. Someone like Roman could tell me if I'm doing this in the right order or not. So I have to admit I am very much enjoying these these ink washes. They they are such a nice nice product. And you get a result pretty quick as well, which is is cool, so. So we'll go on ahead with this. Then we're going to have to give it a bit of time to dry. I'll also at the same time making sure I don't let it pull too much in areas I don't want it to be in. Or don't want it to be too heavy in. And then after that, we can look at Maybe a few other inks as well. We'll maybe use this this miniature as more of a, a test bed for a lot of uh, ink work and uh, just see how that turns out. So I've given uh, the model two coats of the, um, the black ink wash and that has really brought his, uh, his coat down and made it look really, really nice. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to move on to um, blocking out some other colours. I am going to stick with working with inks primarily on this one because I'm liking what they're doing. Uh, so what I have is two types of ink. So as I said before, we have the ink wash, which is basically the ink with a wash medium, with a clear medium put through it. And then we have the intensity ink, which is the pure ink version of it. So what I'm working on now is using intensity inks to colour in or to block out colour and uh, ink washes are going to be used for shading and, and so on. They'll complement the other colors a little bit. So we're gonna be working with Walnut Brown first, and I'm gonna be applying that to our bag, to the doctor's bag, and let me see anywhere else I want to apply it. I'm gonna apply it on these wraps on his gloves here, because these look like separate pieces. So we'll do that in our Walnut Brown Intensity ink and that will help block out that color and then we can use possibly a corresponding ink wash to shade it all down a little bit more. So let's just see what the Walnut Brown does to our bag. I think maybe after maybe two coats of that, that's going to look really nice. So we'll block out the areas that we're gonna use uh, as Walnut Brown and then we'll move on to a couple of others. Now as you may have noticed I've added a few more colors in the <laughs> in the period of saying I'm just going to do this bit and that's because I realized there was only a couple more colors I wanted to add to add with ink before moving on to a bit of traditional painting and uh, what I've done was use some red for the the, the front here which is the sang sanguineum red uh, that's also running down the back and it looks fantastic with that pre-shade, you know, that bit of zenithing and, and so on. The bag looks great too, it's had two thin coats of that ink uh, as well as the wristbands. The gloves, I'm not so sure of the gloves, I know they're going to come back and look a bit better later but um, what did I use? I used um, the Swamp Brown ink, so it's a little bit yellowy, it's a little bit sickly looking, I don't think that really detracts from the look of it. 
I think it still looks all right. So what I want to do now is move on from that, block out a few colors in regular paint. Uh, so I'm going to be blocking out some metallics and uh, doing some other little bits of work like uh, leather straps and belts and stuff. Uh, I really want to breeze through that because it's it's okay saying I'm going to do it and showing a little bit of it, but I prefer just to get stuck in and just go for it. So if I can find all the colors I want to use here real quick, uh, maybe, yeah, actually I'll go with this one. So for our brass, we're going to be starting with um, Balthazar Gold. It's a nice deep color and I, I want to keep this darker tone about him. I want him to feel as sinister as the miniature makes him look, which is is a really cool concept. Uh, for his leather belt, I'm going to go with a Vallejo color, which is model color chocolate brown. Very, very popular color uh, from Vallejo. Very good color from Vallejo too. Uh, I have some regular metallics I want to do as well. I have some regular silvers, which um, I know I had the color sitting around here. Uh, pretty much yesterday and then I rearranged all my shelves <laughs> which is a problem uh, I'm gonna pick out uh, some Citadel Iron Warriors for regular metallics so that's our brass our regular metallics our leather belts uh, for the face mask I'm still a little uncertain I'm pr I probably do want to go with a, a pale looking color so what I'll probably add as a base will be um, Citadel's grey here. I think that's going to be a good base coat because I can uh, wash it down a little bit with some maybe maybe a bit of intensity ink or ink wash and then highlight it up. So make that look as pale as possible. But for now I'm going to go ahead and add these four colours, see how they, they turn out and then we'll look at shading them down and highlighting them. I, I don't like covering a lot of blocking out of colours because it's very rinse and repeat. So I'm going to block out these four colours, which is the Grey Seer, Iron Warriors, Chocolate Brown, and some Balthazar Gold. We'll block those out, and then when I come back, we'll look at shading all of that down, and then we can get onto a bit of highlighting. So we have our metallics and the leather and all down. It's all looking quite decent, looking nice and tidy. So it's time to move on to washing these details down. I'm going to move some of that rubbish out of the background. Uh, the main wash I'm going to go for is uh, a Citadel Agrax Earth Shade and on the mask I'm going to be using a little bit of Apothecary White just to get a bit of a grey shade in there and then we can highlight it with a bit of uh, a pure white after that. So let's start with the Agrax and we're just going to apply it over everything basically that isn't uh, the coat, isn't the previously previously done stuff. So. Get in there. And I'm trying to keep, uh, the reason I'm going with the Agrax, I like the sort of the brown style of shading to all this stuff, so I kind of want it to retain that. Make sure I get the edges of everything too. Like that. And we're going to be doing this, as I said, over everything that we've painted in our metallics and our leather, and then we're going to put the apothecary white over the face mask. So, and hopefully, this will give us a nice dull finish and give us plenty of scope for the highlighting step, which will basically be the finishing part of this video and uh, should end us up with a very handsome looking Plague Doctor. As handsome as Plague Doctors can be. So we've washed everything now and it's all dry and it's looking pretty tidy. So the last step really is to highlight and just add in a couple of final little pieces. So to highlight, what we're going to be starting is everything we've painted with the um, uh, Iron Warriors, we're going to highlight with Vallejo Natural Steel, gorgeous colour, one of my favourite metallics. Uh, everything we've painted in the dark uh, colour for the leather, which was chocolate brown, we're going to be painting uh, or highlighting with beige brown, another Vallejo colour. 
the brass or the Balthazar gold we're going to be highlighting with uh, ammo brass so a nice bright colour to bring the contrast back up and on the plague mask itself after applying the apothecary white which has made it a little bit of a more of a grey tone we're going to be highlighting with white scar uh, just a little bit again to bring the contrast up after that the whole thing's going to get a coat of matte varnish we'll paint the base black as usual but we're going to add a final step which is the eye lenses we're going to be giving them a coat of Citadel Spirit Stone Red. I want to retain the gloss finish that this has normally, so we'll be doing that after putting down the matte varnish. And that'll just give us a nice bright facial feature to really hammer home that sinister nature, that sinister coloration that we're going for. So we have all this dark, deep reds, heavily shaded coloration, and then this bright red eye lenses in the mask. I think that's going to look very, very striking. So I'm going to be starting with the beige brown and everything is going to be highlighted in the same manner, just a little bit of a hard edge. So let's start, we're going to start on his tabard here. Not going to do it a solid line, going to do it a bit of a broken line. Make that leather or that edging look a little worn and a bit inconsistent, just to add a bit of interest to that area. Then, for the likes of a leather belt, we'll just touch the upper and lower edges of the belt or the, the several belts that he has on, just again adds that bit of definition back into the part because at the minute it's a little dark and it's sort of blending into everything around it so you need something just to redefine those edges. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to the rest of the model, we'll then paint the base black, matte varnish and then finish off with a bit of the, the spirit stone red. So when you see the model next it should be complete and hopefully looking very handsome. And here is our long tree, and I am very happy with how this guy has turned out. So let's let's very briefly go through the, the highlighting process. You can see on his mask, there's just a little line of white on the bridge of the nose and the side, just where the beak has a bit of a separation there. The metallics as well, just following the line of the, the metal part of the beak. Um, there's one thing I love both love and dislike about steampunk style uh, miniatures is that there are so many rivets and so many little things that if you if you if you start highlighting them you've got to finish it so a lot of the the rivets and stuff every rivet and all has had a little bit of touch of the the brighter brass but it shows and it, it's really worth it i also missed the buckle i meant to do it brass but i painted it with some natural steel as well simply uh, a an oversight on my part there but what I've got in, as an end result looks very cold looks very dark he has a very sinister look to him you know that look under the rim of the hat I think says a lot to the character of the, the miniature you know this is a a very sinister looking guy and I'm very pleased with how he's turned out and I'm I'm going to put a lot of that down to the, the use of the inks and the washes and the contrast paints on the coat. I think that really set the scene um, for basically the rest of the, the, the feel of the miniature and I'm very happy with it. This is definitely a confidence boosting uh, paint for me. It's uh, good to see something like this uh, come to life. So overall the Highlight process was just a little bit of hard edging over all those areas that I mentioned before. And I think it's turned out well. I think that the highlighting has just brought up that contrast a little bit, particularly on the brass and the, the metals. And overall, I am going to set this guy on my shelf alongside the, the others that I've painted, and I'm going to be quite happy with him. So, as always guys, I hope you've taken something from this. I'm particularly trying to push the inks because the inks are giving such a great result uh, if you're using an airbrush uh, to just prime and zenith, you know, do that bit of pre-shade, especially on something with a lot of cloth. The, these ink washes contra uh, combined with a bit of contrast paint use here and there is really helping 
bring a higher quality finish to the miniature. Now, obviously there's always going to be room for improvement, but I would say if you set this down on the table, and we were going to have a game and all your miniatures were painted like this, you know, I know you haven't taken a lot of time with that, but you've put a lot of thought into it, and you, you know the result you wanted. And I'd be very happy to turn around and say, this is a fantastic looking force. You know, you, you've clearly, clearly painted and you've clearly learned uh, processes along the way. So, with that, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and taken away a few things. And uh, until next time, take care, stay safe, and I will see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.